In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about outstanding expenses in a little more detail. On the screen, you see you know, some statements. I'll walk you through this and uh, then we'll talk about how to uh, you know, think about the items relating to outstanding expenses. So the statement says you're running a furniture trading company and you have hired a local premises, uh, meaning a building or a store, to be used as a store actually. So it's a store. The owner of the store charges you 10,000 per month as the rent. You are also to bear the electricity expenses attributable to the premise which are 1000 per month also fixed. So two types of expenses, uh, one rent and second is the electric uh, electricity bill. Every year you pay rent in the month of uh, April and October on the uh, first days of these months and you pay for the next six months. Uh, however, so let me first draw this in order to uh, illustrate this better. So financial year, which financial year are we talking about? We're talking about 15 and 16. So financial year 15 and 16, this is going to start on 2015 April 1 and it is going to end on 2016 March 31st. And then you have you know 12 months in between so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 all right so you are and then you pay on april 1st and october 1st okay so april 1st you are going to pay something and then may june july august september october so let me write october 1st here you're going to pay something here when you pay here, you pay for the next six months and then you pay for the next six months. So in effect, you are paying in advance. You pay for the next six months and that is how the rent market functions. Uh, people don't let you pay after you use the uh, building. They, you have to pay in advance for the use in the next uh, you know, period. And in case of uh, you know, commercial establishments, the rent is typically collected for six months, for 12 months, even it can be more than, you know, uh, 12 months as well okay let's now look at the arrangement that they have which is uh, first of these two months and then during this year uh, you could not pay the second installment so in this year you paid how much did you pay you paid 10,000 a month so you paid 10,000 a month multiplied by 6 so 60,000 was paid on April 1st on April 1st, one installment has been paid. And then on October 1st, you could not uh, pay it. So this is unpaid. The unpaid amount is 10,000 into 6 as well. So 60,000 has not been paid. However, you convince the store owner to collect the same on April 1st along with the rent of first six months of the next financial year. So when you begin, April uh, 1st next year you you are telling your landlord and this is you know in the future so you're saying you will pay uh, the this rent 60,000 for the previous six months plus you will pay rent for next six months so in the next year you will pay 120,000 which will take care of half of this year and half of the uh, upcoming uh, year so this is the arrangement you have arrived at how should the above be accounted for in the final accounts? So the other expense we've missed is electricity expense, which are 1000 per month and you pay this every month. So let me write rent here and the other one is electricity, which is 1000 per month and you don't pay, uh, you do not pay six monthly, but you pay every month. So in total, you are paying 12,000. Right, so 1000 into 12, 12,000. So there are two expenses, rent and electricity. Uh, electricity is being paid every month, 12,000 for the year, and rent is paid six monthly. And now you've not paid it. The question is, in the final account, when we are preparing the final account, we are going to be uh, preparing the profit and loss account, profit and loss account, debit side and credit side. 
and there is going to be balance sheet as well. So balance sheet. Now in these statements, how do we, what amount do we write? We clearly know that rent and electricity both are going to be considered as an indirect expense. Uh, of course, you can again debate that this storage is for factory outlet. In that case, you can write it in the first half. But I'm going to assume the second half. This is a store of finished goods, sales store. So here we are going to show rent and we are going to show electricity. Electricity expense. So what amount is to be shown is the question. The amount to be shown in this year we have paid. So if you go cash basis, then you would say rent uh, that has been paid is 60,000. All right. And electricity expenses have been paid 12,000. So show this. However, we know that accounting is done on accrual basis. Does not matter whether you have paid or not, you have used the store. The expenses have become due in this year. The benefit from the store has been derived in this year and due to that benefit, you've been able to generate sales. You have to match the re revenue, the sale of this year to the expenses of this year. If you've not paid it, does not matter. So on accrual basis, the rent for the year is 120,000 and electricity expenses have been paid. So actually, you know, there is no accrual of uh, electricity. Uh, however, 12,000 is the actual expense that you should show. Therefore, the amount to be shown is going to be on accrual basis and not cash basis. So this leads us to say that the rent to be shown is going to be 60,000 plus you are going to say an outstanding rent. Outstanding rent of 60,000 is also there. So the expense of the current year should be counted as 120. Now, common perception of expenses that we have paid for it and then we count it as an expense. However, in accounting language, the expense means whatever is, uh, uh, you know, the, if, if you have taken the benefit in the given year, you call it as an expense. If you have not paid it, does not matter. So accounting is done on accrual basis. So this 60,000, which is outstanding, is going to go to current liabilities. Current liabilities and we will say outstanding rent. Outstanding rent 60,000 is going to be shown here. So see the double entry system. There are two effects happening. Uh, the rent which has been paid uh, is shown here. And whatever has been paid will be taken out, will be deducted from the cash account, which will be on the you know, debit side. But all of that is taken care of. Uh, the outstanding expense is 60 shown in the uh, income statement as an expense and also as a liability because you'll have to pay for it. So electricity expenses on the other hand is 12,000. They will be shown as they are all expenses paid for electricity bill. Nothing goes to balance sheet. Okay. So this is how uh, you are going to treat the outstanding expenses. Any outstanding expenses will have to be, uh, first of all, recognized as an expense and shown in the income statement. Second, uh, the amount of outstanding expense has to be shown in the liability side under the current liabilities because you'll have to pay for it in the next uh, one year. All right, I'll see you in another tutorial.